And welcome, everybody, to another episode of Geeking Toyetic. I, of course, am your host, Larry Roberts, and in this episode, we are focusing on one of the best play sets ever to come out. Yes, as you can tell by looking at me, it is the Kenner Star Wars 1978 Death Star play set. So going all the way back to Christmas 1977, we saw a lot of people who were really clamoring for anything Star Wars they could get their hands on, especially toys, because famously they weren't ready to have toys out by that Christmas, and everybody had to settle on the now infamous Star Wars Early Bird Special Certificate. But by the next Christmas of 1978, we had tons of really awesome Kenner Star Wars toys to find under our tree. And possibly the biggest and most exciting of all of those toys was the Death Star playset. Now, the Death Star playset was really the first real playset released for the three and three quarter inch Kenner figures. And it was released that year along with the X-Wing, the TIE Fighter, the Land Speeder, the JCPenney's exclusive Sonic-controlled land speeder. And last but not least, we saw Sears put out a very desirable and hard to get now Cantina Adventure playset that came with the blue snaggletooth. But we're talking about that on another video. This one is all about the Death Star. Now, as you can see, the Kenner designers did take a lot of liberties with the Death Star's shape and design. But those designers were very clever and creative with how they managed to combine some of the most interesting and exciting parts of the Death Star all into this one playset. So the upper tier of the playset features the laser cannon, which was designed to look like the cannon you see at the end of the movie. As you can see, you could put an action figure right there in the seat to man it, and it does have this action lever that when you swing it to the right, it will actually cause the cannon to explode. Moving down to the next level, you can see we have a slim retractable platform that enables you to replicate the scene where Leia and Luke fly across on the rope and it does come with a little plastic rope that you can attach your figure to. Moving down to the next level, you've got these little control centers where you can replicate Han trying to fool the stormtroopers into thinking he's one of them. Or you can use C-3PO and R2-D2 and pretend they're trying to use the computers to control the detention cell and the trash compactor. And speaking of that, this playset would not be complete without the trash compactor. So as you can see in the platform above, it's got a little trap door that's supposed to emulate the chute that they go down when they go into the trash compactor. It empties right down into this cool little orange contraption down here that has a crank on the side that actually makes the wall close in on your figures. Now initially, this came with a bunch of little foam pieces that were supposed to emulate trash and everything. And unfortunately, those foam pieces, I've got them, but they don't last. As you can kind of see here in my bag, all of these foam pieces have completely deteriorated. This is completely normal, unfortunately. These pieces just weren't made to last. Science is working against you with these, so you're lucky if you even have this much. But ultimately, nowadays, having a complete set, you're lucky if you have any remnants of these pieces. They're just going to continue to break down over time. It's just like what happens on the Dagobah play set with the foam swamp, but we'll talk about the Dagobah play set in another video. Also found in that trash compactor is the really cool Dianoga monster. That's what the creature was supposed to look like, apparently. In the movie, we only saw his little head pop out, but we get the whole thing here. And, and last but not least, tying this whole place set together is this excellent elevator they have over here on the side. You can put your figure in there on the bottom, slide and close the door, and then there's a little latch on the back that allows you to lift it up and stop at each floor. It's a great feature. And at the very top of the elevator, you have the wraparound platform here where you can emulate Obi-Wan trying to get at the controls to shut down the tractor beam and allow the Millennium Falcon to escape. Now, along with those foam pieces for the trash compactor, this playset unfortunately has a few different parts that can make it really difficult to have a complete playset. First of all, the rope that goes on the swinging platform part. That rope is always missing. I have the rope, and when I went to put this together, I can't find it. I have a feeling I put it in with some of my other little bits and pieces, so sorry, I'm not going to show you my rope. But it goes without saying, having a playset that actually has that little plastic rope is a real bonus. And finding a playset that has the cardboard walls in really good shape is getting really, really tough because same thing. These are very flimsy pieces of cardboard here 
longer. And the more you slide them in and out every time you put this set together, whether you do it now as an adult or when you played with it as a kid, it takes a lot of wear and tear. And it's increasingly hard to find these play sets with walls that are in really good shape and aren't extremely creased or ripped. Now, this play set was extremely popular when it first came out, and they did sell it throughout 1978 and 79. But by the time Empire Strikes Back came out in 1980, they basically stopped manufacturing this play set. Now, I have talked to and seen some collectors who have said they were able to still buy this play set in 1980 and even in 1981, as some stores did still have some stock. But as such, even if that's the case, you can only find this in the Star Wars box. It did not come in Empire Strikes Back or Return of the Jedi packaging. However, there is a variation to be sought out if you're a completist. The 1978 version of the box does come with the LP symbol on the bottom of the box here that stands for long play, I guess. Uh, the 1979 version does not have this symbol. So that's a way to know which version you have, whether you have the first issue version or the 1979 second issue version. And now one of the reasons these sets may have still been lingering on some store shelves into the 1980s was the fact that this was an expensive set. These were not cheap. I believe they retailed around 18 to 20 dollars on average which given inflation and everything if you look at what that amounts to today that was a lot of money for a toy like this especially when you had a toy line where us kids wanted all the figures we wanted the vehicles we wanted the other play sets we wanted all of it so asking mom and dad to shell out 20 bucks for this thing was kind of tough in fact due not only to the high selling price but the high manufacturing price it cost kenner to make this thing a lot of the foreign companies decided that they were not going to release this Death Star, and instead they came out with their own version of the Death Star playset. It was made out of mostly cardboard and paper and some small plastic pieces. It might have been cheaper, but it was cool. It had more of a half dome shape, so it felt a little bit more accurate to the round Death Star design. And it had a bunch of different rooms and everything. This has become very desirable, not only for collectors that grew up with this overseas and in other countries, but for US collectors, because we never got this play set. So we love this thing, and it's become very desirable, just like the regular US version. However, for collectors that are trying to collect either version of the playset, it is further complicated by the fact that these things are expensive. They're difficult to find complete on the aftermarket and finding them complete with the box is even harder. And then if you want to get like a graded sealed one, you either better have a lot of expendable income or be prepared to sell a kidney or something because man, those things are really expensive. However, with a little time and patience, you can find these on the aftermarket. You can offer often find pieces of them and piece it together, that is a good option and it might be a way that over time you can do this a little more affordably. But regardless of the cost, I gotta say, the Death Star playset is an awesome piece to have in your Star Wars collection. Yeah, it might have cost the parents a lot of money, but we got every penny's worth of fun and enjoyment out of it. So tell me, did you have this playset as a kid? Do you currently have one in your collection? Did you love it as much as I did? Or were you a little critical of the design stuff like some people claim to have been? Make sure you leave comments and let us know all of that down below. And do not forget to come and join us in the Geeking Squad group on Facebook. It's free and open to join and we talk about stuff like this and other kinds of fun geeky stuff all day long. Thanks as always for tuning in and please do not forget to like comment, subscribe, and share this with others. We appreciate it so much. It means the world to us because we love talking about toys and sharing this with you. We'll be back soon with more content talking about vintage toys, modern toys, and all sorts of other related stuff. So in the meantime, take it easy. May the force be with you and happy hunting. See you, everybody.